center. Good matchup here today. Number 17, Gonzaga, taking on the San Diego Toreros. Standings of the West Coast Conference, nine straight regular season titles for the Zags at San Diego right now in the four spot. Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us. John Shambi alongside Bob Valvano. And, well, 12 straight 20 win seasons for Gonzaga. All sorts of success for Mark Few. But overall today, I guess you could say, both these teams still have something to play for. Yeah, really, especially, I mean, from Gonzaga's point of view, of course, they've clinched the regular season championship, but they lost the tournament championship game on this floor last year, and I think going into the tournament this year, they'd like to kind of take care of old business there, if you will, and put that demon behind them. For San Diego, a much more practical reason, if they win, they finish in fourth place, which gives them a bye in the first round of the conference tournament, so that is a big, big advantage, obviously, to not have to play that first day, and that's on the line for them this, this, this afternoon. All right, how about Star Watch? to the focus on a couple of senior big men. Well, these guys are not only important to their teams every day. You look at Josh Heitfeld, an over 12-point game scorer, but of late, he's been playing some terrific basketball. He's posted career highs twice over the last couple of weeks. And Gino Pomer is a guy who had 1,600-plus points, the all-time leading scorer, but the last two games, he's been particularly good. He shot 13 for 21 from the field in their last two wins when, according to their coach, Bill Greer, they've really started to develop a little bit better offensive chemistry. All right, Gonzaga's lineup. Pygo, Bolden, and Downs, a three-guard attack. Day and Heitfeld up front. And meanwhile, for the former Gonzaga assistant, Bill Greer, his Toreros have Deshaun Jackson. Danny Brown, the senior, gets the start. Rob Jones, Gino Palmer, and Clinton Houston. And there is Bill Greer, second year, 16 years as an assistant at Gonzaga. Goes back a long way with Mark Few since their days when they were students at Oregon. And Mark Few, of course, amazing success as the head coach of the Bulldogs. You see a great contrast in styles today. San Diego wants to limit the number of possessions, and Gonzaga will be happy to play as fast as this game will allow them to go. And there wins the tip, and it's San Diego basketball. One of the things about Gonzaga, this is as good a defensive team as they've had in quite some time. Houston shot contested. And a fight for the loose ball. The Toreros come away with it. One of the real weaknesses for the San Diego team is their rebounding, so that's big to get a second chance here in the first possession. That was Day with the block. He averages two a game, a very long Gonzaga team. Everybody talks about that. That is the single thing they point to about why they're so good defensively. Heitfeld pulls up, uses glass, and it's good. 29 a career high his last time out against Santa Clara. He's really in an offensive zone right now, so comfortable. And one of the great stories for Mark Few is the kind of, uh, I don't want to say reclamation project. So let's not kid ourselves, John. It was wobbly for him for a while, and he's come on for a great pass tomorrow. Jackson buries a triple to Ferrero's lead. Zaga with a lot of balance, a lot of weapons offensively. Seems to be the one place you've got to try and hurt the Zags, making threes. Fargo short nets, little jumper. Zaga makes seven threes a game, they give up seven threes a game. So obviously it's about the one area statistically they don't have a decided advantage. Jackson into the lane. And they get the trap. A turnover in Gonzaga basketball. Bill Greer didn't like the call. Gonzaga wearing the alternate black uniforms. Third time the Zags have worn these unis. I felt. And then hits another. I know it's just a guy. Don't go and get too close. He's going to spill some of that confidence on you, Boo. He is just oozing it right now. Josh Heitfeld, big guy, but he's got good range. Jones going to work against Day. The danger with controlling tempo is you get passive offensively. You still got to make them guard. You got to make them move. You can't stand around just saying, I want the shot clock now. Shot clock is at three. Jones. Well, that's the kind of shot you get. Move, and that's not a good possession. Day working 
down low. And Heitfeld, another three. This is just ridiculous wow. right now. It's not fair. Josh Heitfeld, 40% from three on the season. The 6'11 redshirt senior off to a fast start. All eight Gonzaga points. All of those that were right in the middle of the well, too. I mean, it's like playing a guy when you're shooting pool and everything's going in the center of the pocket. You know, he's red hot. Omer, answer. Gino Pomer, two straight years, first team all conference. Oh, they go to him again. Ride the, ride the hot man. Day's jumper pulled down by Jackson. San Diego down three. These teams like mirror images of one another in terms of the offenses that they run. Just the speed at which they run it is the market difference this year. Brown, the senior, misses. That one swatted out of bounds and goes off Houston. Gonzaga basketball. Josh Heitfeld has been just picking up where he's been playing of late. Look at that. That is right in the middle of the basket off the backboard. That little step back three right here. That's right in the middle of the well. And then again, off the double team in the post to the corner. I mean, just so much confidence right now. That's tremendously important as you go into postseason play. Amazing. You get one guy who's elevated his game like that, the confidence spills over everybody else. Golden couldn't rattle it home. And they get Heitfeld on the foul, but Josh Heitfeld off to a great start. The Zags lead early. One part. John Shambi, Bob Valvano back here in San Diego. The Toreros down three. Let's examine why Gonzaga is so good on the defensive end. Everybody talks about their length. Watch on the block, a terrific job standing there straight up defensively by Day, and Heitfeld comes over, no foul, nobody reaching down. You know, you think about great defensive teams, sometimes you think about teams that are just pestering you on the perimeter. They don't necessarily do that, but what they do is nothing is unchallenged. In the lane, especially that mid-range game and driving game, you get in the lane, all those long guys putting arms up, you don't ever feel like you get a good clean look. Guy like Micah Downs is 6 Watch eight. here they come again. Jones shot contested. Height felt the board. <laughs> Micah Downs into the lane. Had it stripped away. And Houston gives off to Jackson. Jones with Golden on him. Starts to back him down. A little fade away. Shot they really want. Holder didn't buy any of the fakes. The other thing, very disciplined defensively, too. And then Hargo and Bolden, a couple of guards at about 225, both very physical. Hargo leaning in, couldn't get it to go. That door of the board is, he is checked in. Arrow's doing a nice job rebounding, winning the rebounding battle early. Toss down low, they find Roberto Macra. <laughs> Pace is good for San Diego right now. They're on a pace at about a 65, mid-60s game. They can live with that. It gets in the 70s, it's going to be a little too quick, I think, for them. They'll go on tour, trying to find Stephen Gray and a turnover. A one-point game early on here at the Jenny Craig Center in San Diego. down low. Shot contested by Downs and pulled in the rebound. And a swat by Mafra. Roberto Mafra, the junior from Brazil. And his presence felt early. Absolutely. Gonna take off. Oh, that's a terrific move. And gets it to go. The Toreros lead. Showing some quickness, explosiveness, challenging Heifel. You go that quickly, you don't let the help come. You can't use that length. Winds up with an easy bucket. So Mafra with four, giving them a little boost off the bench. Gino Palmer 
set the check back in. Micah Downs is fouled, and he'll go to the line. They got Matt Door on the foul, and that is his first. A couple things you will look at here, obviously. Bill Greer told us if they don't win, at least compete rebounding-wise, and maybe win the turnover battle, it's going to be a long day. They can't give this team extra possessions. And for Mark Few, he said the pace is going to be the key for him. This game gets into a grinded-out root canal, as he called it. Certainly doesn't help this team's chances. Well, right now, offensively for Mark Few's group, it's been the Josh Heitfeld show. He's three for three from the floor. Everybody else 0 for five. Downs hits the first as Heitfeld sits down. And the senior nails them both. Austin Day checks in for Downs. Gonzaga by a point. No pressure here, trying to quicken the pace a little bit. The 26-year-old senior in for Mark Few, our minor league baseball pitcher. Feed down low, Colmer. Nice seal off and the deuce. Good quick ball movements. Another great way to negate that length. Nobody can get over there to help once the entry pass is made. Chris ball movement. Very sharp by San Diego. Dimitri Goodson, the freshman here. Oh, that's a turnover. And a nice steal there by Clinton Houston. He's an energy guy for Bill Greer. <laughs> Flex action here and their variation on it. And a nice finish inside. Palmer with six. And the Toreros lead it by three. And this is right about the pace that San Diego would like. And they're winning the possession battle, holding their own on the boards and creating far more turnovers. Look at how quickly though they reshaped up defensively. Looked like they were getting an open three, they couldn't even get one off. Palmer on the baseline. Four turnovers for Gonzaga so far. Gives off to Gray. And a bump down low. San Diego leading early by three and being led by their senior, senior Gino Palmer. He's got six. Can you tell me which of these offers an EPA estimated 33 miles per gallon on the highway? Here, let me help you out. See a Honda Accord. Bye-bye, Toyota Camry LE. Here in San Diego, and the Toreros leading it by three. Gino Palmer, their outstanding senior, he is tough down low. Well, you know what, John? One of the things that Mark Few preaches is deep position on the block. Now, watch down here on the low block. Watch how deep he's getting position. And as the ball gets reversed here, they've got that nice triangle. And again, look at the position he's got. One of the reasons that's so important, not only because it gives the guards a nice passing angle, but you see how quickly after he's able to score, there's no time to help. When you're that deep, obviously, you're that close to the bucket. Not enough opportunity for the weak side defender to get over there and for Gonzaga to use that length. So a good seal of the defender leads to that good field goal percentage, and Palmer's off to a good start. San Diego's done an outstanding job defensively so far. Gonzaga without a field goal since the 17-15 mark. They felt the only one with any field goals. Will Foster, the 7-5 junior from Buckley, Washington, has checked in for Gonzaga. I felt out really Matt Molden number 15 has got to get going. He's had a terrific year. Everybody's talked about him in discussion for player of the year. That's how good he's been. And now obviously with how many field goals, they've got to get something going offensively. Molden down low, Pargo at a shot block. Torero's outstanding defense continues early on. San Diego on the 10-2 run, and Palmer will 
kick out to Ginty. See the difference, he caught that a good ways off the block. And that's that, there's the difference. And so obviously he can make that, but not the shot that he'd like to take. Not like when he was so close down on the block early. Argo now. Oh my. No call, a little scoop. Won't go, Jones the board. <laughs> I mean, I don't believe in rewarding guys when they die, but I don't think he go. I think that was a charge right there. But a moot point because Torero's doing a nice job again covering their defensive glass. Sean Jackson handling. It was Jackson's jumper that put the nail in the coffin against UConn in the NCAA tournament. Their upset win last year in the first round. They get Pargo with the foul. And that is his first team foul number two. And again, this is an explosive offensive team. We're here almost at the 10 minute mark of the first half, and Gonzaga's had one player make field goals. And obviously, Josh Heifel from Red Hot, a pair of threes and a two as well for his eight points, but still, we got to get somebody else involved in the offense here. Go back in the game, we close in on the 10 minute mark. Lead down low, Palmer. Catch. And the bucket, and he's got eight early on. Golden gives off to Gray. And a travel, another turnover. That's five on the Zags. You know, we talked to Bill Greer before the game today, and he said, the last couple of games, and he really can't say he expected it necessarily, or his hope for it, but their chemistry has been night and day better. Their offensive efficiency, they've shot the ball well. They shot 52% against Pacific a couple of games ago, 44% against Portland, and really did a great job defensively holding those teams well under their averages shooting-wise. And so just they've really... After a very trying year, a lot of ways, seemingly you're hitting that stride at just the right time. Jackson, an air ball and a three. It'll go over to Gonzaga. 15 10. Torero's leading. 9.27 to go here, first half. Gonzaga's hitting a cold spell, and some of that, of course, when Heitfeld was out of the game. But like you said they got too many weapons. They have four guys who average a couple of figures. Last, last four games as a team, Gonzaga shooting 55%. In the last four, they've been red hot. I mean, the numbers are staggering, especially in light of the defensive field goal percentage. Gray hanging and he's fouled as he goes down to the deck. Stephen Gray, the sophomore from Bainbridge, Washington, which is just under 10 a game. They get Rob Jones. That's his first team foul number three. John, to amplify what you're talking about, their last four games for the Zags, 60% shooting, 51, 57, 53. I mean, when you do that and give up 37% on the year, that is a huge, huge advantage. But so far, Torero is defending them pretty well. Stephen Gray, 70% free throw shooter. Crowd is filled in here at the Jenny Craig Center. Seats around 5,000. And senior day here. Matt Gore handling. Very important they get good looks out of their half court. Well, certainly, Zach should know some of this stuff. This is essentially the same offense. These two guys, very similar. It's good to be on the near squad scrimmage today. Nice job there. He's getting over the screen. That's a Jackson. Oh, no. Offensive wow. foul call. Well, Bill Gray not getting any breaks early because I have a hard time believing that was a charge. He had turned the corner. Let's take a look. Wouldn't be the first time I'm walking. Turns the corner well. Oh, I don't know about that. And you see Day take a little. Half step to the left, it appeared. Well, that's tough. That's tough. Might have even been a, a no ball, but it's the hardest play, I think, for basketball officials to call. I don't want to come out here and wear out my welcome on the West Coast and question every call, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
the doubt, but uh, that's two very, very borderline ones. Both have gone against San Diego. A few years back, they experimented with that half circle underneath, like the NBA has to determine whether a charge should be called. Would you like to see that in college? Uh, I didn't at first. The more I'm around it, the more I see it. You know what? Because you see in the NBA, a lot of guys use that as an excuse to just let the guy go down the lane, it appears sometimes. I hate to see that for college basketball. Guy stepping in and taking the charge is a great time-honored tradition, but it would help the referee and, frankly, might eliminate some dangerous plays where guys are airborne around the basket. So come to like it. Argo shot that off the heel of his hand as Mafra comes away with the rebound. Mark Few upset about some calls here. Uncle Cargo got bumped there. Steal and Fargo the other way. Throws it down. Well, when you're struggling offensively, John, that is the place to make a play. Defensively. Clean the backwards, make a play defensively, get a leak out, get an easy one. That takes a little bit of the pressure off of Fargo stepping up. As you'd expect in his early. Wow. Back to back and Pargo. Two steals, four points. Just like that retired. Jeremy Pargo was the West Coast Conference Player of the Year last year over Patty Mills of St. Mary's. Now that gives you a reason, indication why. That's just what the game needed. He's going to get a five second count here, too. Oh, and an my. offensive foul. Three straight tough possessions for the Toreros. Offensive foul on Roberto Mafra. Well, Jeremy Pargo steals and converts and then does it again. Tied at 15. Which of these luxury sedans is a 2009 Car and Driver 10 Best Award winner for the second straight year? And according to Kelly Blue Books KBB.com. John Shambi, Bob Valvano back here at the Jenny Craig Center in San Diego, number 17, Gonzaga. Tied at 15 with the Toreros. The Toreros, of course, on this home court last year beat the Zags in the WCC championship game. And it was in part San Diego's run at home through the tourney that led the conference to move the conference tournament to a neutral site they'll be playing in Las Vegas. Yeah, and you know, I know Mark Few talks to us about it, and he likes it because there's always a thought that when you're kind of playing campus sites, how fair is it unless you earn that right? Obviously, they did not. If they did, they would be hosting it every year. Gonzaga is the first place team. Plus, there's an air of big time atmosphere when you move to a neutral site and field. So and they're selling tickets well there. Oh, Josh Heitfeld. The flush, nope. Wave it off. Heitfeld over the bat. And that's his first. Welcome those of you that have been watching the NASCAR Nationwide Series from Las Vegas. Gonzaga and San Diego hooking up in this one as Matt Bolden can't fire from in close. And it's Torero's basketball. And again, locked up 15 apiece. This is exactly the pace that Bill Greer and the San Diego Toreros wanted. Absolutely. San Diego averages 61 points a game. And Zach is 78. And we're at a pace even to be under 61. So obviously you're right. Bill Greer's got to be pleased. He's got control of the speed of this game. Houston being harassed. Loose ball. Jackson comes away with it. Five on the shot clock. Jackson pull up. Oh, that was halfway down. Day the rebound and gives off to Gray. A few urging his team to go and they get missed shots, turnovers. They've got to take advantage. Yeah, they're supposed to travel right there. Bolden unimpeded to the glass and lays it home. Now the 13 plus point a game score gets his first two, and that's big. As Heitfeld got off to a flying start, scored his team's first eight points, hasn't scored since, and they've struggled offensively. They need Bolden to get going. Earlier, when I said that Josh Heitfeld had only one foul, he's got two. Mafra 
Rejected by Day. That's his second block. Third all time in block shots, only as a sophomore. Bolden nails a triple. And just like that, Gonzaga leading this one by five. A 10 0 run for them, and it was triggered. Jeremy Pargo back to back. Clean steals at midcourt, turning them both into breakaway layups, and that really turned the momentum of the game around. Jackson gives off to Houston, and now Door with Bolden right up on him. Stephen Gray charged with that last foul. Here in San Diego, Gonzaga and the Toreros, John Shambi, Bob Valvano, as we take a look at the West Coast standings, and. Gonzaga trying to go undefeated for an unprecedented third time and this is big for San Diego too. Absolutely. You see them fourth right now in that tie for fourth. If they win or if Portland were able to win later on, they would wind up San Diego would, as the number four seed in the tournament. And that's big because the unusual format in this conference. The top four actually get first round buys. So they would be getting that first night off in Las Vegas and that would be huge. Gonzaga, of course, as the champion, has a bite right through to the semifinals. Big start for both the bigs for San Diego and Gonzaga for their pick belt each with eight. Jones collects the loose ball, goes in, and he's fouled. They get Day with that last foul. Well, no, Josh Heifelt get going early. Well, he is in such a zone. He has set a career high twice for himself over the last couple of weeks. He saw the bank shot early, then the three, made another three after that. But Pomer hasn't disappointed either. Nice deep position inside. Gets it so deep they can't get their help. Again, same deal, getting good deep position. This Gonzaga team so long defensively, you give them a chance to help. They are going to take advantage of them. That's why they give up just 37% shooting. But when you get it that deep, as Pomer did, they were just to convert it into eight points. When these teams got together in Spokane on January 31st, Gonzaga won easily by 17. And Pomer was badly outplayed by Heitfeld. Gino Pomer in just 28 minutes came up with six points and two rebounds. The rebounding's been a problem for this team all year long. They started rebounding well today. In fact, when they won the rebounding battle against Portland, that was ending a streak of nine straight games where they've been out rebounding. Down three off the mark. San Diego basketball. Terreros down four. Been a while since San Diego's last field goal. Gino Palmer at the 10 minute mark. Jackson get that rebound. That's big. When, for every team, but especially when you struggle on the glass. Your guards can get you some rebounds. That makes a heck of a difference. Jackson. Sure, but gathers in his own rebound. And puts it home. Deshaun Jackson there. He's got five. The game has evolved. The, the definition between positions has gotten more and more blurred. Your guards have got to rebound. Day down low and a foul on the floor. Timeout oh. on the court. Double they just teed here. up both Pomer and Day. 20 to 18, our score. <laughs> Nolan Smith and UConn trying to come up with the top spot in the land again. As far as what happened here. Day drama. gets charged with the foul and then the double tech. Yeah, you got exactly right. But the reason it's significant, the double tech, is because, as you see, referee David Libby make the signal for the double technical. That, that personal foul was Day's second. The technical, which counted as a personal, now becomes his third. And that's a big problem for Gonzaga. Now, Day's got three. Heitfeld's got two. So they are dealing with some foul issues for some very important players. Zags will go to the press again. Happy to make the game go faster. Each team with seven team fouls. Jones tried to lob for Palmer. Ira Brown on him. And wide open right there is Brown. Wild game of runs here. 8 3 to start for the Zags, 12 2 for San Diego, bouncing back. And a 10 0 run by Gonzaga to retake the lead. 
But again, you mentioned it twice, and it couldn't be more accurate. The tempo favoring San Diego right now. That is the single biggest thing you look at for the score. Under 10 on the shot clock. Cargo. Ira Brown. And Micah Downs there underneath and able to put it home. Downs has four. Sags a pretty good rebounding team. Plus almost four rebounds a game. It's been a big problem for San Diego basically all season long. That door being harassed gives down to Paul Mayer as a size advantage on Brown, but can't convert. Again, did you see them not able to get the deep position like he was early? How about Fargo exploding to the hoop? And Jeremy Pargo now with six. He has that senior and his emotion and mindset so influences the rest of the team. Mark Few told us after they lost to UConn, he really took it hardly. And of course, they lost a couple of games after that. He is uh, in many ways the emotional leader of this team. And he likes the fact that after the Memphis game, they all bounced back, including Pargo. They didn't let that translate into some other struggles. Oh, in and out there for Deshaun Jackson. Zaga trying to add to a six-point lead. Switching the ball screens. Pargo's pull up. Got it. Eight for Pargo. He has turned the whole momentum of the game around. Those two clean pickpockets at midcourt that led to layups. A couple of buckets here. And Zach's flexing their muscles a bit. 16-3 run for Gonzaga. Under a minute to go here. First half from the Jenny Craig Center. Gonzaga trying to go unbeaten for an unprecedented third time in West Coast Conference play. For the shot clock, Jackson is bailed out. No, it's going to no. be an offensive foul for an illegal screen. Yeah. And ABC and ESPN, your NBA destinations coming up tomorrow. Coverage 1230 GMC NBA countdown. First at ABC, it's the Pistons and the Celtics, then the Lakers and the Suns. And finally on ESPN, the Cavs and the Hawks. The NBA on ABC and ESPN on Sunday. And Shaquille O'Neal, 45, he goes for against the Raptors. There's still some the chicken left on that ball, I guess, huh? Boy, we talk about the pace, a like kind of slow pace that Bill Greer likes, but he certainly can't like the fact his team only has 18 points. That's not going to be very many teams, and certainly not a team that the Zagas can. Ball screen, what do they do? Try to switch it. Margo can't spin it home, and that'll do it. So a tough defensive struggle both ways, but Josh Heitfeld, eight early points. Gino Palmer has matched him. And the difference is that much. 26-18, the Bulldogs leading the Toreros. Now let's join Ryan Burr, Jay Williams, and Adrian Branch for the halftime report. All right, John. A the break in San Diego as Gonzaga leads the Toreros 26 to 18 from the Jenny Craig Center. John Chambi alongside Bob Valvano and good start early on led by Josh Heitfeld for the Gonzaga Bulldogs but really it was Jeremy Pargo that that pushed them and, and got them on that run towards the end of the first half. Yeah the game was kind of going all over the map. Heitfeld got them off to the great start then San Diego put a run together and was up 15 10 and then this is the part of the game where Pargo just took over right here. He gets the steal at midcourt turns that into an easy one that made it 15 13 then he picks the pocket again. That was the very next possession and turns it into an easy one. That tied the game and then this is when they really start to exert their dominance. The ease with which they were scoring makes the layup and again off a good ball screen pulls up and hits the jumper. He really put the game on his shoulders and turned the momentum around. Not that the stars John have done poorly. I mean Heitfeld had the first eight points of the game hasn't missed a shot and Palmer has played well also with the eight points but certainly this is an offensive team in San Diego that's not been consistent. They don't 
need to make a comeback from any more than this. They need to get a good start to start this half, get themselves back in this thing. Jeremy Pargo with eight first half points. Hilger's got to be happy with the rebounds, but Gonzaga's defense stifling. Fifth time this year they've held an opponent under 20 at the break, including San Diego. The first time these teams met as Eichfeld is fouled and he goes to the floor. You got to see the basketball no matter where you are. The defender is back to the ball right at the top. They threw right over his head. Eichfeld able to catch it and draw the foul. Josh Heifelt, who's battled foot issues during his career, a couple of stress fractures, actually both feet last year, struggled early dealing with that missed time, and then wasn't entirely himself, but he's healthy now. This is a very satisfying story for Mark Few. Most of the people know the suspension, the initial suspension with the, the mushrooms, the I don't even know he referred to those, John. The hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic drugs. Hallucinogenic drugs. There we go. That's a good technical term for it. And I'm not making light of it. This is a program a lot of people hold up as you know, a bastion of doing things with great integrity. Mark Few went out on a limb for the young man, and the young man has rewarded him by coming back, putting together a great senior season. He's been playing his best basketball down the stretch here. And again, that defense is just stifling. And the downs over there, pulling a Bo Jackson running up the... <laughs> the side of the the table. Look at that play, Bo Jackson making that catch and then running, running yes. up the on-field wall. Yeah, that was somewhat similar. Ran right across the Jenny Craig side. That's right over Billy Jean. Got to find a way to get some easy buckets. Part of the problem is this offense is very similar, of course, to the one that Zagger runs, so they are very, very comfortable defending it. He down low, Houston. Bump by Heitfeld, no call. Bolden tracks down the loose ball. And they get the foul. That's Rob Jones. And that will be his second. We've been talking throughout the broadcast, and you just can't overstate it. Everybody you talk to about what makes the Zags so good defensively. Lead the nation in defensive field goal percentage, just 37%. And all they talk about is their length. And you see in situations like that, look like a great opportunity around the basket, but there's just guys coming from everywhere. You never feel comfortable. You never feel like you get an open shot. Bounce past the hold in the corner. And they find Heitfeld. Soft touch, big guy with 11. Josh Heitfeld, again, a career high 28. Two games ago, a career high 29. His last time out against Santa Clara, and he's been feeling good shooting the basketball. Oh. Jackson contested, but able to get it to go. That's a tough shot. Well, as we said, when do you get an easy shot against them? That's the whole key. You got to get it done by making some steals, getting some easy ones off your defense, and Gonzaga's done a much better job of restricting their turnovers. I got a little post-up move, wouldn't go. Gonzaga by nine. Sean Jackson again. He gets fouled and he'll go to the line. Take a look at the ball screen here and a great job of Heitfeld spacing up there. There's the screen. Both defenders go with him. They're trying to hedge and recover, but it takes so long to get back over to him. He knocks down the jumper. You saw Pomer come out and hedge on the dribbler, but that's great team basketball. Rather than go inside where the help is going to be already waiting for you. You know he's a capable shooter from there. He just steps up to space, catches it, and before they can close out on him, he knocks it down. Last foul on Matt Bolden. That's his first. John Jackson, the junior from Fresno, California. This is a San Diego team that had all five starters back from the group that upset UConn in the first round, and they haven't played a game together this year because of injuries. They lost Brandon Johnson in December to a blown-out Achilles suspension. Tremaine Johnson now is elected to transfer. It's been a tough year for Bill Greer's Downs tracks down the ball, and oh, miss. Kills you. You change defenses. They went to a little half court trap. You get a shot that's that's a miss. You got to come up with that rebound. Well, they got a second chance at it. And then they get a third here. The Zags, not quite. But again, the Torero's not a good rebounding team. You go to a change of defense, John. You get a missed shot. You got to crash the boards and limit it to one. They dodge the bullet there. 
Jackson to Jones. And an offensive foul. Heitfeld stepped in and able to draw that one. Brandon Johnson, it was December 6th against San Diego State. And Brandon Johnson done for the year. And here's a look at what happened. Looks innocent enough. He just jumps to try and get his hand on a uh, intercept the pass. And as you can see, as soon as he comes down, he's in some pain. Johnson averaging 13 and a half points a game in eight games. They think he will get the extra year. The new rule, it used to be you couldn't play in 20% of your team's games and get a red shirt. Now it's 30%, so he should be back as a fifth-year senior. Uh, one guy's got a charge, one guy's got a block. David Libby. And they go with the block. They'll take control and say it's a block. And that foul on Rob Jones is fourth. Tough call, but again, you see the baseline official points to charge right away. And, and Bolden is already saying that's my fault. He would agree. It would have been a 2-1 vote. It should have been a charge. Zaga by seven. Make it nine as Bolden comes to the hoop and Downs finds him. Seven for Matt Bolden. That's what they do. They you give them a second chance, they make you pay. You turn the ball over, they make you pay. They get an extra possession. They look like you might have been a turnover, they make you pay. Palmer is fouled by Heitfeld. Bolden moving without the basketball. Starts down here on the baseline. Watch here comes Heitfeld for a screen. He curls around it. Doesn't get any help from his defender. That's a mistake. Frankly, Pomer can't just let him go unimpeded to the basket, but that's the experience of Bolden doing a nice job. The defender chased him around the screen. There was nobody to help. Saw the lane. Turned it in easy. I don't know that he gets talked about enough. Everybody knows about Pargo, player in the conference last year. Heitfeld, everybody talked about Day as a breakout guy. But Matt Bolden let him in scoring last year, and he's kind of their unsung guy. I think the people in the league know all about oh. him, but nationally, I don't think he gets as much attention as some of the other guys in this team. When Mark Few told us before the game, you know what, he should be in the discussion of the player of the year. That's how valuable he's been. So I absolutely you're right. When you talk about the brand names, if you will, he uh, gets mentioned as an afterthought. That's unfortunate because he's much more important. That last foul, by the way, on Josh Heitfeld, number three, as Chris Lewis deflects the pass. And with that foul, It'll be Gonzaga basketball. Palmer will sit down. Roberto Mafra, Mafra checks in. He was, he was with a shot of energy into this ball club when he came out in the first half. He's the reason they put that run together. Sandy, you're going to take the lead, see if he can do it again. And there he is with the first rebound right out of the shoot. Mafra, an interesting case from Brazil. He's only been speaking English two years. Take some courage to come over oh. here, not knowing the language and making the adjustment. They get pulled, and that's his second. Timeout on the court. Matt Bolden and Gonzaga leading 31 23. And the junior from Denver leading the way. And Big Monday continues. A couple of college hoop games for you. First is number 12, Villanova, going up against Notre Dame. And then at 9 Eastern, it'll be Baylor and number 24, Texas. It's Big Monday presented by Bud Light on ESPN. And Matt Bolden helping the cause for Mark Few. Well, he said maybe underappreciated. Let's appreciate him a little bit. He likes to take it strong with a wrap. Good drive there. Good decision here. Both defenders went with him hard on the ball screen and now moving without the ball. Curls. No defender comes to help. He senses the seam. Gets it, makes a good strong finish. There's good team basketball, though. You see. Plays. Height felt with the good pop off the screen. Then the nice delivery on Bolden made the cut. Zags thrive on their team basketball. And you saw it in that little highlight reel, but Bolden certainly doing his part. He's also, by the way, the leader on this team in steel. So I mean, he does a lot of things. A decent rebounder. He will be back next year for Mark Few. Just a junior. This is Devin Ginty with the basketball. 
Zone here by Zags. Into a three. Back tapped. And Gore comes away with it. They'll set it back up. Got to get something going offensively. The Toreros held to just 18 at the half. And so far, five second half points. And such a labor for them to get anything offensively. Not surprising as good as the Zags are defensively, but they're going to have to create some offense with their defense. Gore. That helps. A big three. And his first three of the game. A career high 17 his last time out against Portland. Keep in mind it was the offensive rebound that gave him a second chance though, and they did a nice job. Patience, getting some penetration, and then the pitch out. Lead down to five. The ball screen again. Did a job hedging and recovering that time. Downs buries a three and he answers door. Seven for Micah Downs. So many weapons, and again. Teams are it's going to be an inter squad scrimmage. The philosophy is very similar. Maybe the pace the Zags play appreciably faster, but their concepts the same. So great team basketball at the other end as well. Good look down low as they found Chris Lewis. And Lewis, his first two. They felt working hard on the block against Mafra. Got a pin. Downs from deep. Oh, got that one. Micah Downs, who started his college career at Kansas, played his freshman year there, extending the defense. He's got 10 points. Yeah, that was he made that first one. You could tell he was feeling good. Good spacing. As a, as a team, Gonzaga shoots the three at 38%. Heitfeld gives off to Dimitri Goodson, the freshman from Spring, Texas. Dimitri Goodson's brother, Mike, is the running back at Texas A&M. There's Bolden and the foul. Nine for Matt Bolden. We talk about the similarities in many ways of these teams. Watch them both get the penetration to set the three-point shot up. Penetrate, kick in the lane. Look at all that space out there. They take advantage of it for the drive and kick. And now the Zags do the same thing. In the lane, the drive. At the top downs, wide open. You have to respect the guy turning the corner. And frankly, it led to that last play by Bolden because he turned the corner that time. Everybody conscious of staying home on the shoes, so his job is to finish it. He does and turns it into an old-fashioned three-point play. Matt Bolden with 10. Trouble there. A trap in the corner. And they get Micah Downs with the foul and his first. Few saying that wasn't that a hook. Take the dribble taking that offhand and hooking, but the official says nope. Downs in that position calls the block. And this is tough because they can't run to throw it in. It's always a good opportunity to press usually out of that situation. Trap rather I mean, they did get the trap. They're going to do a better job getting at it. That door handling, not a point guard by trade. And didn't play that position since junior high. He's had some difficulty when they asked him to do it. But a very good shoot. Well, that's what they need right now. It's really clear the bottom of the well. Oh, Mafra. And one. Alberto Mafa will go to the line, the junior from Brazil. Yeah. Guerrero's hanging around, but John, they got to get a couple of stops in a row defensively because they just are not that explosive offensively. Look right here. Oh, that's a good call. I love when guys reach down and then they look at the fish. I have my hand straight up. <laughs> if you watch the replay, not exactly. Reach down. A good call there. It's a possible three point play for Mafa. Golden rebounds, it gives off to Goodson. Got to get some stops in a row and then turn at least a couple of them into maybe some easy ones. Get it down to six points. Ten is a lot of points when you have trouble scoring like the Claros do. Downs gives off to Ira Brown, now Bolden. Goodson, oh, nice oh, shot. Just so many weapons. And just already in this game's momentum turn, we saw Pargo get them going. I mean, really, they've, they've fired on all cylinders when they needed to. Heitfeld got them off with a great start. Then Pargo, we watched Downs make a couple of threes. Now Goodson gets into the end. Goodson, the freshman, has given them quality minutes. Pargo's minutes have gone down by around four, and 
it's a good thing Mark Few looks at it as he gets a, a little more of a rest. Doesn't get worn down. He talked about that, about when they went through <laughs> a team that's 22 and 5. You know, but they're losing, but they did have a cluster there after the UConn game. And what, what he thinks really came out of that is just what you said. It allowed some other guys to develop. Including Goodson, and he's been doing a good mix. Sean Jackson hits. And Jackson now with 10. This is the second. And Zaga up 11. Mafra charge with that one and a timeout on the court. Well, the first half it was Jeremy Pargo, the senior, leading the attack. How about the freshman, Dimitri Goodson, for two? All right, Ryan, so a couple of unbeatens remain in terms of in conference play. Memphis, and here we are in San Diego. Gonzaga trying to pull off the trick for the third time. Herb McGee passing eight off Rupp and you know, Mark Few, what a job he's done. And this year, trying to make it 14 and 0. As you can see, be the only team in conference history to put three unbeaten regular seasons together. How about kudos, by the way, to Herb McGee, a guy I coached against a lifetime ago. And that's how long he's been there. He played at Philadelphia University back when it was called Philadelphia Textile, and he's been there 40. 4-0, 40 years as the coach. <laughs> Think he knows his way around the buildings a little bit? There's <laughs> Ira Brown. And the 26-year-old senior makes them both, the former minor league pitcher in the Royals organization. He actually pitched one year in Spokane for short season A, which is fun. Playing his college basketball. Bulldogs leading the Toreros by 13. Door miscommunication, but it's deflected out of bounds. Well, ABC and ESPN, your NBA destinations tomorrow. Coverage starts 12:30. GMC NBA countdown. Pistons and the Celtics started off in the Lakers and the Suns. And on ESPN, the nightcap, LeBron James and the Cavs taking on the Hawks. Fun Marbury works out in Boston. There's a block by Brown. I think that he can help because I don't think that they need him to do a ton. I think he'll accept that as a question. What remains to be seen here is that Terreros can get some offense going because they are just struggling. 18 points in the first half and hasn't gotten a whole lot better here in the second. Half. The downs with 10. And now Matt Bolden. On this ball screen. Shot blocks at four. Off the window and good. Matt Bolden with a dozen. They're winning that battle on the screens. They're making better decisions and they're making them more decisively. And they're really hurting them. So I've hurt him a couple of different ways. Turning the corner after Heifelt set the screen. He popped out. Did a jumper earlier. They're really doing a nice job. And Zaga won the first meeting between these teams, 64-47. And all time the Bulldogs 15 and 2 on this court. And there underneath goes left handed. And Gino Palmer with 13. Or I make it 11, I beg your pardon. Again, turn the corner. Pick out that time. To convert. They got to get some easy ones, John. They can't have every possession be, you know, birthing a baby for a bucket. It's not going to get your back 13 down. Gray rebounds the Jackson miss. Under 10 to go here in the second half and. Timeout on the court. Number 17, Gonzaga leading by 13 here at the Jenny Craig Center. They're all like this. It's gorgeous. Just a magnificent place. Uh, 
Gonzaga trying to go 14 and 0 in conference play nine straight regular season titles for the Bulldogs and San Diego trying to pull off a win and get to seven and seven Josh Heitfeld's group I mean the school overall now 20 straight 20 win seasons but yeah the weather is first class if they were to have a tournament of weather San Diego would be a one seed. <laughs> No question about that. Guerrero's here in a little zone. You know, they're shooting a good percentage this half. That's not the issue. The issue is you're down. Oh, nice job offensively finding the crease. But you, you know, most margins are made up in bunches and runs. And that's what they haven't been able to put together here. They've got to find, and in order to put a run together, you generally got to find a couple of quick ones. Nobody touched that. See what they have. The Go to the possession. That was literally right in front of us, and nobody touched that ball. That goes right out of bounds. Nope. That's untouched, but the officials do the right thing. If you can't tell, and they all check with each other, you go to the arrow, and the arrow favors San Diego. So it remains with the Toreros. They are getting out rebounded. 24 21. They've made seven turnovers to just five. They're not winning the possession battle. And you do that against the team as stingy as the Zags. That's a tough wrestle. Look at him. He just can't get an open shot. Well, Mayor underneath. They get him for the walk. Yes, they did. Well, Big Monday continues pair of men's college basketball games on ESPN 7 Eastern battle in the Big East number 12 Villanova against Notre Dame and then 9 Eastern Big 12 Baylor and Texas a Georgetown beating Villanova oh, what a huge win that is for them still in the discussion largely because their strength of schedule has been so good Omer stepping in, loose ball down, stepped on the sideline, and it's a turnover. And they're defending fairly well here. They just haven't been able to convert very many of them into points. Threes have got to be at least a little part of the equation, Bob. If I could go baseball on you, the teams that have the ability to come from behind more often than not hit the ball out of the park because it's so hard to go single, single, single. Same thing right. here. And Gonzaga winning that battle 5 2, but that is the one spot that's uh, somewhat susceptible. They may Make seven a game, they give up seven a game. But so far, when they go ahead and got much, here's one. And door hits just like that. And you piped in perhaps to the bench. You asked for it, and you got it. Door is second three. They showed us some different looks defensively. They went to a with press. Now they're in some zone. Uh, hope needing a miss, and then they got to go to the glass, which has not been their strength either. Downs flashing along the baseline. He's going to try and get himself free. He's got a couple of threes this half. He felt had it knocked away. Four in the shot clock. Hargo pulls up. Air ball put back by Gray. And a shot clock violation. Yep, no, no. But nope. They're going to keep playing, and that's there was an opportunity to push it there. If the ball was in the defender's hands, even though you're right, it would have been a violation. But once you've got possession, they let you play on. Yep. And Diego's still not really wanting to push it all that much. Ten-point game, closing in on the seven-minute mark. And they'll get Pargo on the foul. Well, Bill Greer, the former Gonzaga assistant, hoping his Toreros can die a long distance a couple more times. They're down ten. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Audi, Truth and Engineering, and Gillette Fusion, Gillette's closest, most comfortable shave. In San Diego on ESPN2, guys. All right, Ryan, thanks very much. So, Cal and UCLA hooking up and... All right, some bracketology for Joe Lenardi, the latest and the greatest. Last four in, first four out. What jumps out of you, Bob Belvano? Well, the two teams on the bottom there, Penn State and Michigan, Ed Duchellis getting it done at Penn State in a conference that's probably been one of the surprises of the year, the Big Ten. And then how about John Beeline getting a turn pretty quickly at Michigan? The first four out, Tubby Smith's team looked pretty strong early. They are clearly on the bubble. And Cincinnati, I know that Nick Cronin would take some issue with that. 
this is argument would be uh, put some of the quote unquote mid majors in uh, in a league like the Big East and see what their record would be. That is the I you know that's the big question. What will the committee do with a league like the Big East? So big, 16 teams now. As I said before, if you turn that league into two 18 conferences, would you have a problem with five from each conference? I don't think so. But I don't know that they're going to get 10 in. It's hard to justify. Uh, maybe I don't know. Maybe it will be, but a 10th place team. Yeah, I don't think they'll get 10 in. How about nine? How about eight? How about seven? I mean, it could be anywhere. Actually, it's going to be interesting to see. Well, Jackson with a couple of free throws, and now if they can get something in terms of a quick one, get it into a six-point game. You know, there's certainly time at seven minutes, a couple of possession game, but this Gonzaga team very, very composed. Look how quickly they get the floor spaced, but exactly what they want. Fargo taking control. Holden gives to Gray. And Heitfeld finds Day and lays it in off the window. Austin Day, his first two points of the game. He's been in some foul trouble as he has three personals, including the one on the technical. Great execution. Heitfeld came to the middle and then a good high low pass. Heitfeld found Day and they got an easy one. It's hard to get any momentum against them. They just are like surgeons. Door hits another nine for Matt Door. Three threes. He's giving you your three run homers that you've been looking for. A couple of them here. He traded a two for three. The crowd getting into it here. The deficit at seven. Great help from the weak side that time. Wouldn't let Golden turn the corner. Now have to face again. Guy trying to turn the corner on him. Matt Dora charged with the foul. That's his second. Boy, they just come off that screen and put so much pressure on you. They, they stopped Bolden from doing it. Then they went to the opposite side, and Pargo tried it. He's able to draw the foul and get to the line. Seven team fouls on San Diego. Seven on Gonzaga as well. And Pargo at the line. Jeremy Pargo. Able to make the front end of the one and one. Nine points now for Pargo, the senior from Chicago, Illinois. His brother, of course, Gennaro, played at Arkansas and has played in the NBA. He's playing in Russia now. This team is going to be dangerous in the tournament if for no other reason. And they have so much upper class leadership and their schedule this year is not going to make them intimidated by very many teams and played the likes of who they played this year. Tennessee twice played Maryland beat them beat Oklahoma State. Played Memphis played UConn played Arizona now that's certainly a team that has come on physical defensively. Gray stepping in the passing lane. Balls to the ball screen. They switch it. Four for D. And the rebound goes to Gonzaga. That would have been huge. They would have traded a two for another three. Had it down to a six point game without getting any stops. Ball screen come here. Bolden trying to turn the corner. Day with the pull up, soft touch. They are so frustrating to try and prepare against because how many weapons? I mean, you take away one, they go to option two. You're lucky enough to take that away. They have three, four, five, and some more in reserve. And Moffa stepped on the baseline. 52 41, Gonzaga with the lead. And you see RPI of 38, schedule strength of 107. Tennessee not once but twice and those are all quote unquote good losses. Although no coach would use that phrase. He made an interesting point Mark Cuban we talked about some of those games he's you know he's a stand up guy but they certainly not looking to make some excuses. Oh great cut a terrific block by Brown. And out of 
of bounds off of Gore, and he'll stay with Gonzaga. But, you know, he was talking about, you talk about those conference games, and they have always had that philosophy, you know, anytime, anywhere, just about in terms of their schedule. But then they come in conference, and people are like, huh, ho hum, you know, they're going to be undefeated and win it again. And he makes the great point, you know, it's easy to say, but every game they go in right now has become. You know, the biggest game on the schedule, sellout crowds and, and the, the bullseye squarely on your back. And that wears on you because certainly then you go from that, oh, now, by the way, try and get up for Memphis. Try and get up for, you know, another game that is supposed to be for of big games on your schedule. It's, it's, uh, I think it's a fair appraisal. It's not easy. And they don't get Memphis on their home court. They don't really get anybody to go and play on what is their true home court. Argo, not for the block. Well, he's been really, really active. Roberto Mafra. They got numbers because Heitfeldt went for the steal and fell down. Still not going to get a shot at Switching everything and won't let you turn the corner. Switched everything on the little handoff. Now short shot clock. Round of three. Mafra tips to Jones. Left hand wouldn't go, but he's fouled. Rob Jones will shoot when we return. Timeout on the floor. Gonzaga by 11. By 11. And ABC and ESPN, your NBA destinations tomorrow. 12.30 it starts. GMC NBA countdown. And then you get AI against Paul Pierce and the Celtics, the Lakers, and the Suns. And it caps off on ESPN, the Cavs and the Hawks. It's the NBA on ABC and ESPN on Sunday. San Diego only had 18 points in the first half. 23 already this half, and they're shooting 50%, but they've only been able to get 14 shots off. They have to work so hard to get every shot. Just wonder, they may not even be enough time in terms of possessions with 312 to go. Because every possession is necessitated. Like Gonzaga's defense had eight, nine, ten passes, it seems. They haven't gotten much from this guy today. Rob Jones averages a little over nine a game, and he's got three now. Gino Palmer had eight early on and has only three since. So that guy's hands I feel very much under control. We talked about how Pargo is really been instrumental today in getting this game his momentum turned around first with his defense then get a couple of big shots under three to go here's the Jenny Craig Center Gonzaga trying to go undefeated in oh. conference play for the third time in the last five years and Bolden that's a dagger right there 15 for the junior and the lead back up to a dozen Really having trouble with the ball screen that time. They hedged on it, then they packed off of it. Not exactly a good idea. 43% three point shoot. Feed to Palmer, he's fouled. They get Pargo on the foul, number four. His third, I beg your pardon. Gino Palmer averages 14 points and a little over six rebounds. The senior from Oceanside, California. Side leader scorer and rebounder. And since they moved to Division One. Golden will back it out. Give off to Pargo as door pressure. And they get door in the foul. You know, it's been said basketball is a simple game that's difficult to play well. Here's the simplicity of the ball screen. And watch how much Gonzaga gets out of this. Golden with the pick and the pop. Heitfeld pops. And they're a step slow running at him. He knocks it down. Here Bolden turns the corner. It's not even really a good screen by Heitfeld, but he recognizes that nobody comes to help. Argo misses the front end there. Miscommunication Jackson They're passing on top of Jones. Sorry, John, but there was one more example that talks about how difficult they are to defend. Bolden comes off the screen, 
Homer shows himself, but then leaves him, and you can't do that. Again, Bolden, you have to make the right read. They step off, that's the right read for 43% three-point shooter. Stand, stand back and knock in the three. So three different examples of plays they scored off of a ball screen. One of the things that's tough about Gonzaga, you look at the five they have on the court, all three of them can shoot threes, including Heitfeld and Day, and those guys are both 6'11". Different ways to defend the ball screen. One is a simple switch, which we're seeing more and more teams do, it seems like, with the versatility of players. The hedge, which was a bad example that they just ran before. Palmer came out and hedged it and didn't give, didn't stay on it close enough to discourage the shot. You can blitz it or trap it. You can get, if you're good enough to have an on-ball defender get over the top of the screen, you can slide it which is between your teammate and the guy setting the screen. Or if a guy's a bad shooter, you can go underneath, go what they used to call four deep. Years ago, they used to say that was an absolute no-no, never do it. But now, based on the scouting report, you'll see teams do that. In fact, you saw Bill Greer do it against Goodson earlier because they didn't think he was going to stand behind the screen and fire that three, so you go underneath. But scouting is so much more sophisticated now than it's ever been. The video breakdowns and so much of that depends on your personnel. It's a lot of knowing your matchups for your, for your players. in the corner gives off to Ginty off balance three just scrape the rim this is a proud Gonzaga team I mean obviously San Diego knew they were playing for a first round by this for all intents and purposes was a first round tournament game for them because had they won they would have got themselves through yep. into that second round now they're going to have to play the first day in Las Vegas Fargo playing keep away a minute to go in this one, Bulldogs by 13 and about to go 14 and 0 in conference play. Brown hits a three, the senior. A little bit, I think, about what you were looking for, his first three of the game, but, you know, pull the trigger and take a chance with a quick one. So 46.3 seconds to go. The Zags ready to make their 11th consecutive NCAA tournament appearance. John Shambi alongside Bob Valvano. And well, the Zags can do it a lot of different ways. I think you usually think offense when you think Gonzaga, but this year the defense is really good. Well, for the people who believe that adage, offense wins games, but defense wins championships, you got to love this team. 37% field goal, defensive field goal percentage leads the country. And as we watch today, they, they're a tough bunch. I mean, they do it a lot of different ways. They are long. They do a great job helping. And they make it so you rarely get, you, you don't ever feel comfortable shooting the basketball. And if you say, okay, well, we'll try and beat the defense down the floor and take the quick one, they're more than happy about that because then the pace is playing right into their hands. So you got to kind of pick your poison when you play this team. And San Diego in this one at 38%, but Gonzaga leads the nation in opponent field goal percentage. There's the pressure and the pass over towards us. Out of bounds, San Diego basketball. Don't know that I was quite ready for that. As your eligibility's up, they wouldn't want you to have it anyway. Good thing. Jackson. Downs the board. Ten point game. And they foul Micah Downs. Downs with 10 points here today. Balanced attack as per usual. Pargo a dozen, Bolden 15, Downs 10, Heitfeld with 11, and that's the way they come at you. And that's what is the beauty of this team is, you know, you just kind of wind them up and they do what they do. They're going to defend you. They're going to challenge every shot. Use that length, and then who's going to score at the particular time? I don't know, but I know when it's all said and done, we're going to have... Multiple players, three, four guys in double figures. We saw that tonight. I felt with the great start. Pargo carried him a bit in the middle. Bolden carried him here for much of the second half. And then we saw some other important players step up. Downs had the back-to-back -back threes. And that's the recipe for this team, John. This is what they do. Joe Lenardi right now has the Zags as a seven seed. We'll see. 
you know Palmer the senior will sit down gets a nice hand here on senior day time leading scorer and rebounder in Torero's history. Eleven points for Micah Downs day checks in Downs will sit. The carbon copy of the game on the Zags home court earlier in the year. San Diego battle. We just couldn't find the offensive fire power. The Zags kept it in the 40s and won pretty comfortably. And that's pretty much what we've had here this afternoon. I mean, this is really the example. They need a shot. And Gonzaga just so tough defensively. Nick Price, a shot blocked by Day. And that'll do it. 58 to 47 the final and Gonzaga the only team in WCC history to have three undefeated seasons in conference play. Gonzaga wins it here today 58 to 47 and they go a perfect 14 and 0 in the West Coast Conference. Now for more on our game tune into ESPN News for a post game extra. Coming up next, Boxing Ali versus Foreman. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. But now we send it back to the studio and Ryan Burke. Thanks so much.